and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. This week it's makeup dupes. Do you know what? It's taken me two or three hours to sort all of these out. I think I'm going to have so many it might actually be a two-part of this video. I was just shocked at how blatantly beauty companies copy each other when I actually started rummaging around in my beauty stash. Um, it's in a way harder to hide the fact that if you're mimicking makeup it tends to look the same. You can sort of repackage skincare and put a different scent on it and a different colour on it but it can essentially be the same formulation but when it comes to makeup there are a lot of dupes out there so let's start. Let's start with brows. I'm going to start with an iconic brow product and it's, you'll not be surprised to hear, the beautiful Chanel and it's the um, La Palette Sourcil and it's two beautiful natural colours. This is obviously my colouring. They're two slightly waxy powders and it actually comes um, in a little pochette, one of those beautiful velvet pochettes and it's got three miniatures with it which quite frankly you'd never use in a million years. I mean you know I'm holding my Anastasia original brow brush here from when I met Anastasia and she did my eyebrows. I mean, look, Anastasia doesn't do things in pink anymore, but that's how brilliant her products are. They last for ages. Anyway, so you've got a, a mini spoolie, a mini angle end brush and a mini pair of tweezers, but you wouldn't use any of those anyway. It's a beautiful product. Lots of celebrities use it and that is my colour. And I'm waiting to use that. And I tell you why, because I use the dupe, which is L'Oreal Brow Artist Genius Kit. Look how tatty that is. But really, how long does it take to hit pan on a brow product? A long time, right? I've used this for at least a year and a half. So this is a tinted wax, which is great for keeping brows in shape. It gives that sort of slightly soft soap brow effect. And that's the perfect color for me. So there's the high street dupe. And there's also another one that's even cheaper. And it's Maybelline Master Brow Pro Palette, which is actually, in a way, a little bit more of the dupe of the Chanel one because it's uh, three powders, it's the two Chanel shades and then a sort of, they call it a brow highlighter, but it's essentially a sort of bone neutral bobby brown powder that you put just underneath if you want that slightly more sort of cut brow effect. They're so reasonably priced but by the time the makeup's on your face, does anybody really know if it's Maybelline or Chanel? They don't really, do they? Unless you're ever going to get the Chanel out. Obviously, if you're in public, you'd get this beautiful palette out, wouldn't you? And show off. But two brilliant high street dupes for an absolutely iconic brow product. And now I can put down my brilliant Anastasia brow um, brush, which, by the way, turns any high street product into a designer product because it's so perfectly designed. Where should we go next? Should we talk eye sticks? I love to talk about eye sticks. Um, here is a brilliant Diego Della Palma product. Diego Della Palma is a, um, a professional makeup artist. Uh, he's Italian, I think he's from Milan. And these products are available. They're so reasonably priced. I remember when it was first launched in Milan, super high-end and super expensive. But actually, they're so reasonably priced if you can find this such a clever range. Anyway, this is his um, long-wearing uh, eyeshadow. And this is in gold copper. It's a brilliant product. It's essentially, um, let me just take the top off and I'll show you, one of those. They're widely available, beautiful soft shimmer colour, but guess what? Not the first, not the original, there are so many of them, but one of the original came from a company called Nude Sticks. This is a real cult favourite. They weren't really available over here. Comes in a little tin with, how clever is that? A brilliant mirror and it comes with um, the original stick formulation and an inbuilt sharpener because you do need a sharpener. Now this isn't a perfect match for colour, it's lighter but same product, virtually identical. A fraction of the price, the Diego Della Palma. Of course they're not the only ones. Let's have a look at some more dupes that are available. How about Banksy? Virtually the same product, slightly different colour, one that I've used, which I really like, can be used as a shadow or a liner, sort of a medium price. What else have I got? Guess what? Charlotte Tilbury. 
Colour Chameleon. I absolutely love these. You can tell I've used these loads. There's the Colour Chameleon from Charlotte Tilbury in Bronzed Garnet, which is for green eyes, but I virtually live in. And then there's the darker shade, a really beautiful one, Golden Quartz. They all come in similar shades. The fact that I haven't got the exact colour matches doesn't mean to say that you can't go out and colour match a Charlotte Tilbury or a Nude Stick or a Bagsy from Diego Della Palma. Essentially, they all do the same thing. Wouldn't surprise me if they were all from the same factory. They are beautiful, soft shimmer, long wear pencils at a range of prices. Once they're on your eyes, can anybody really tell if they're Nude Sticks or Diego Della Palma? I probably think not. My final one, actually, even though it's in a slightly different packaging, is um, the Rosie for Autograph one, which is that there. And if I put that on there, that's a more purpley finish, which is actually almost the direct copy for the Charlotte Tilbury one. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. You might be super angry if you're the originator, but really, in terms of making these products available for everybody, why spend an absolute fortune if you can't afford it? Because dupes are available on the high street. Right. Should we talk about Mac's new foundation? Mac is about to launch um, next to nothing face colour, which if you were to see it on social media, you might think it was a completely new formulation. I'm just going to lock that back down again. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. It's almost a new category of product in the sense that it's not really a tinted moisturiser because it doesn't really moisturise. So what it does is it gives a thin veil, they're not even really calling it a foundation, a thin veil of skin tint that is super, super flattering, perfect for summer. It's a reaction to the fact that um, long wear, super high coverage foundations uh, like Estee Lauder Double Wear, which do you know what, as a category in itself, is bigger than some other brands, it sells so many, and Armani Power Fabric, which give those beautiful velvet, super glam heavy coverage. A lot of women don't want that. They want that, which is a super lightweight, feels like nothing on the skin, slight silicon feel, but then the silicons come off, the volatile silicons come off, you just end up with the perfect tint. It's a little bit like an extension of face and body tint, okay? Relatively new category until you realise there are dupes available. Kiko Skin Tone also comes in a range of colours. Different packaging, but a really similar finish. And I run out of hands here, aren't I? Okay, again, it comes out. That's a darker one. Super lightweight virtually identical finish, a range of colours. Oh my god, it even smells the same. I kind of like the Kiko packaging. So that is skin tone at a fraction of the cost. Comes in a really good range of colours. Where are we? Let's have a look at the original. Well, we've got Mac Studio next to nothing. We've got Kiko skin tone. And might I also suggest, whoops, Makeup Forever Water Blend, which one I was doing my research today, I also suggest has got a super lightweight watery finish to it. I am genuinely running out of skin here. Let me do that on my arm. Slightly scented goes to nothing between your fingers. It, it, it feels watery. This is the point of these. And they give the most beautiful, flattering finish on the skin for summer. So technically not as revolutionary as you think, because I think Kiko launched first, and then Makeup Forever, and then MAC. I do think there's a growth, or there should be a growth and need in the market for these super lightweight foundations that just give a hint of a glow to the skin and yet feel like nothing between the fingers. Literally nothing between the fingers. Hopefully it's a reaction to those heavily over made up Instagram faces that we all see. I couldn't recommend all three of them highly enough if you want just a gentle hint, not even the, 
the slight sort of greasiness that you can get from a tinted moisturiser, which sometimes are more moisturiser than tint. These are more tint, less moisture. I actually love all three. Now let's talk about translucent finish powders. And we cannot talk about beauty dupes without talking about Beauty Pie. Beauty Pie is an incredibly clever subscription beauty service where if you subscribe for, um, I think it's a minimum three months, but I'll double check that and I'll write it below. You uh, get direct from factory prices. It's a company set up by a woman called Marcia Kilgore, who is um, a bit of an icon in the beauty industry. She started Bliss. Um, and then she started Laboratoire Remed, so they did Remed skincare ranges, um, and then she did Fit Flop. She's done lots of uh, lots of ranges available on the high street. Anyway, now she's created Beauty Pie, and she's gone to the manufacturers of the big beauty brands, and she said, if I can get enough people to subscribe and I can demand enough numbers, then why not give them direct from factory prices? And that's what you do. You can buy them direct from Beauty Pie and pay full price, pay the retail price. Or if you subscribe, which obviously then convinces you to buy a certain number of products, you get them at direct to factory prices. This is Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder, which is essentially, apart from the fact that I've put my finger in it, I'm so sorry, a solid translucent pore soft focus finish powder pore minimizing it's a great product it's incredibly reasonably priced it's also shockingly similar may i just say to it cosmetics bye bye pores which is an iconic product that's uh, been available in the us for a while this one actually comes with its own pad i mean obviously you don't get such nice packaging if you have beauty dupes rather than the originals that's an iconic product that a lot of people really love. But there's also Makeup Forever. And I'm actually using this one at the moment. So that is Makeup Forever. I'm going to have to use my glasses for this one, even though I'm using it and I should know what it's called. It's called Ultra HD uh, Micro Finishing Press Powder. Same product. Perfect from camera. I've got it down my T-zone at the moment. And I also use the loose versions to set my concealer. Should we look at the loose versions? There's Makeup Forever. There's Bye Bye Paws. And then do you want a high street version of that? Beauty Pie haven't done one yet, but my goodness have Kiko. Look at this gorgeous packaging. This is Kiko's Invisible Touch uh, Face Fixing Powder. I love this packaging, look at this. You undo that. And there's, you shake it out, a little bit like a, a mineral makeup uh, dispenser. And there's the pad that you can press it into your skin with, although obviously you can use this brush as well. That does not look like a dupe, does it? That is such beautiful packaging. Can I just say, amazing beauty brand alert. I'm loving Kiko makeup at the moment. Kind of as much as I'm loving beauty pie. Where should we go next? Oh my God, there's so many interesting things. Should we do double end mascaras? Mac are about to launch a double limb mascara, which by the way, I've only seen on Insta stories. I haven't actually tried yet, because I don't think it's available in the UK. I'll find out what it's going to be called. But it's nothing new. <laughs> Here is my, another interesting range, me, my, M-I-I. -I. They have something called Full Focus Lash Duo. Now the whole point of a double ended mascara is not one of those ridiculous white lash base primers that nobody uses in a million years but two different brushes so you have your main wand there for your lashes and then at the other end you've got a tiny one for your lower lashes and your inner lashes do you remember when Clinique did the lower lash mascara really clever well why not have both so that's when a dupe that is the high street is actually cheaper than the designer one. So that the designers are duping the high street. Such a clever product. So, if you're a beauty icon, obviously somebody's going to dupe you. This is Touche Claire in its limited edition, no need to sleep packaging. It's a light reflective radiance concealing highlighting product. It's not a concealer in the sense that you'd put it on your spots or your blemishes. You use it just on the inner corner of the eye and around the eye here, anywhere you want to attract light and cancel out dark circles. And this is 
plainly labelled no dark circles, no dark shadows in fact. So here's two Chicla, here's no dark shadows, this is what I've gone on at the moment. I'm really loving this product at the moment. So reasonably priced and I love anything that tells you exactly what it does on the packaging. No dark shadows. It's, uh, in, a car, it's uh, in a shade called Pizzazz. And I'm really loving that product at the moment. Such a clever range. Um, they come out of Germany, they do, actually. So there you go. There's the icon. There's the dupe. Um, I think I've done enough for today, right? That's more than enough dupes. I think this has probably been going on for like half an hour, this video. There are more I could do. If you want to see more, will you ask for more? Because while I was sorting this stuff out, the dupes when it comes to palettes, eyeshadows and lipsticks were incredible too. But I thought I'd stop just with the ones that I'm currently using or I've fallen in love with. And also iconic products that are so successful it was obviously somebody was going to come along and try and be inspired by it or copied by it. It's basically the makeup equivalent of Topshop and Zara taking stuff from the catwalk and not of all of us, not all of us, can afford high-end products and I quite like the idea of these products trickling down. I think in a way they don't really cannibalize from the big brands because if you love Charlotte Tilbury or Chanel, you're gonna be invested in those brands anyway. You're gonna love them, you're gonna save up for them. But if you don't have that money and a lot of people don't, why shouldn't you be able to get stuff from Boots and Superdrug and drugstores on the high street? So they are my makeup dupes. I'm covered in it, look. I really hope, I'm gonna put all the details below because I feel like there's been so many, but I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you want me to do more, let me know. I have found so many dupes, I can't tell you. Palettes, lip colors, um, lipsticks, highlighting palettes. There are so many dupes out there, which I kind of think in a way just means that we want more makeup and it's exciting for the beauty business. But it also means that if you're a savvy shopper, you can save money. All the details are going to be below. All the prices and all the URLs. Just click that little arrow head and everything will come up and I will list everything below. Thank you for subscribing. I hope you found this as much fun and as informative as you found the skincare dupes of last week.